Now, my message to you today is titled, How to Love Your Enemy. And how you go about, first of all, who this enemy is. And how you go about loving them. So, who are the enemies Jesus is talking about? Well, it tells us in the text. It says, they are those who hate you. Those who curse you. Those who spitefully use you. These may be people or institutions that harass, disturb, or harm you in some way or the other. But there is another type of enemy. And this type of enemy is inward. It is anger, hatred, fear, and other destructive impulses. Now, God's gifts of love and salvation is freely offered to all, even those who choose the path of wickedness. Because he makes his sons to rise on the wicked and the evil, and the rain to come on the just and the unjust. But I say to you, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. So how do we love our enemies? Now, in our modern Western culture, Love is abstract, a thought of emotion, how one feels towards the other. But the Hebrew word for love goes much more deeper than that. The Hebrew word for love means a gift or to provide and to protect. We do not choose our parents or siblings but they are instead given to us as a gift from God, a privileged gift. So, in, the, in fact, even in the ancient culture, one's wife was chosen for him, and it still happens in some culture today. Now, it is our responsibility to provide, to protect the gifts that God has given us. And so the Hebrew word for love, therefore, is to protect what God has given to us. We are to love our neighbors, our families, not in an emotional sense, but in a sense of actions. We are to love our neighbors. Now, that doesn't specify who that neighbor is. And that includes those who hate us, who curses us, and who despitefully uses us. And the Bible says in Proverbs 25, 21 and 22, if your enemy is hungry, give them bread to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. For by so doing, you will heap coals of fire on their head, and the Lord will reward you. Now, let's just bring it on our level. Now, it's all well and good when somebody outside hates you, harm you, or despitefully use you. I've been in shops where uh, for no reason the person serving will be angry. But what happens when this person is in the church? Or is a fellow Christian. Now that is a tough call. But we are called not to love in emotions. But in action. What we do. Instead of what we feel. What does it mean to bless? One of the ways we love our enemies. Is to bless them. Bless those who curse you. Now the word blessing from the Greek thought is again pure abstract with no foundation in the concrete and from the Hebrew perspective the blessing is an action again an object that is presented out of respect to another so therefore to bless your enemy means to speak well of them 
Be sure that you are not bad mouthing someone you don't agree with or someone who you disagree. The unconditional love of God is very crucial in the life and character of a Christian. When we pray for those who curse us, we align ourselves with God and his kingdom. And we are doing what Jesus would have done. Pray for those who spitefully use you or mistreat you. Well, how do, we, how do you do that? Simply, you pray for them. You pray for them and think of ways to help them. It's as simple as that. The natural inclination of us is to always fight back and bite back. We see this in movies, the good, bad, the good guys and the bad guys. We see this in society, but we are called as disciples of Christ to love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. Now, the best way to get back at your enemy, if you have any, is by choosing to love them. Because such gracious actions will get back at them more emotionally than if we were to offer a harsh retaliation. If an enemy is hungry, give them bread. If they are thirsty, give them water. For by so doing, you will heap coals of fire on their head. Amen. Amen.